Good morning everyone. Today we're going to be making the Brighton crochet headband. If you have checked out the Fisherman Throw or the Brighton Dishcloth, you're going to love this headband. It's the same stitch and it works up so warm and cozy. So today I'm going to be demonstrating the adult size, but I'm also going to leave um, the measurements below for all the different sizes that you can make. This is a really easy pattern to adjust just by changing your increase chain. You want to keep it a multiple of two for this texture so you can either increase or decrease and because it's worked um, you're working the length of it you can just keep working the rows until you meet the measurement that you want. Um, so I think that's about everything so we'll just gather our supplies and then we'll meet up and get started. To get started, you're going to need a 10 millimeter hook, 50 to 60 grams of super bulky yarn. I really like the Lion brand Woolies Thick and Quick for this, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. Okay, so to get started, we're just going to be creating our slip knot and chaining 12. And it's at this point that if you want to make a bigger size or a smaller size, you're either going to increase or decrease this beginning chain by two. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and chain 12 or whichever number you have landed on for the size you're going to make and we'll meet up at the end and start into row 1. Okay, so we're at the beginning of row 1 and we're going to be placing a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So keep in mind that the three skip chains of the starting chain um, counts as the first double crochet. So we're just going to work a double crochet into that fourth chain. Then we're going to follow that with a chain one, skipping the next chain that we did and working a double crochet into that chain. And then we are going to follow that by a chain one and then work another double crochet right in beside that skip chain. So we're going to repeat that pattern all the way to the cross, well, all the way across, and then I'll meet up with you to finish up row one and start row two. Okay, so now that we're at the end of row one, we're just going to finish off working a double crochet in that last chain. Now at the end of row one, you should have nine stitches, remembering that the first three skip chains count as the first double crochet. Just want to count along and make sure that you still have nine stitches. Now I always like to place a stitch marker into my first stitch so that I make no mistake when working my way back where my last stitch goes. This is going to help to keep your edges nice and even. So carrying on with row two, we're going to chain two and that's going to count as the first half double crochet. And then we're going to work a double crochet into the chain stitch below the chain one that we did. So right into that base chain there. Okay, so that is my first double crochet. And I'm going to follow that with a chain one. And then I'm going to work another double crochet into the skip chain below the chain one. And if you can, it's a good idea to pull your stitches up a bit so they're the same height. And then we're going to be chaining one again and working into that skip chain below. And we're just going to do that to the end of this row. So I'll meet up with you at the end of row two and we'll move on to row three. Okay, so we're at the end of round, or sorry, row two. And we're going to skip the second last stitch and we're going to work a half double crochet into that last stitch there. So at the end of row two, you just want to check again that you have nine stitches. And you see that I've marked my first and my last because sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle to figure out which one's your chain and which one's your stitch. So we just want to make sure we have nine all the way across and then we'll move on with row three. Okay, so we're just going to chain two and turn. And then we're going to work a double crochet into the first skip stitch under the chain one space. So for this one, we're working into the double crochet below. Okay, so I'm just going to mark that as my first stitch again, and we're going to follow it with a chain one. Then we're going to be working into that double crochet below the chain one again, followed by 
another chain one. So you can work this pattern now um, right up until you've reached the length that you want. So for an adult size, it's usually between 19 and 20 inches, but if you're making it for somebody and you know their specific head size, make it about an inch smaller. You want it about an inch smaller so that when it starts to stretch, it doesn't slide down their head. So we'll just meet up um, once you've finished crocheting the length you want. Be sure to let me know how you're making out, maybe who you're making it for, and if you've learned something new today and enjoying this video, consider it giving a thumbs up and maybe subscribing to my channel, and if you hit that bell, then you will also be notified every time I release a new video. But for now, let's finish crocheting, and we'll meet up, and I'll show you how to finish off the, uh, do the finishing edge so that we close off the open spaces. Okay, I'll meet up with you soon. Okay, so now that we've finished crocheting to the length that we want, we're gonna finish it off by closing those open spaces. We're gonna chain one and turn, and then we're gonna be working a single crochet into the space, followed by a double crochet in the double crochet below, just like we did previously, followed by another single crochet in the chain one space, followed by a double crochet in the double crochet below. So you can work that all the way across and then just finish it off with a half, half double crochet in the last stitch. Then we'll meet up and we'll sew it together and finish it off. Fantastic! So that is all nice and closed and we are ready to sew the ends together. So this is a really easy part and this actually could be your last step if you don't want to cinch it. You could add buttons or you could just close it like this, whatever you want. So we'll just go ahead and do this. Okay, so I'm actually sewing my ends together with a needle, and the reason I'm doing that is if I were to work a slip stitch, it's gonna end up being really bulky, and I just find that this helps the headband to lay very flat where the seam is. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna go back and forth with the needle, and I'm weaving in my beginning tail as I go, just saves a step but you don't need to do it this way and you're just going to do that all the way across and I try to line up my stitches and keep those together just so that when I get to the end that it's a nice straight edge and I don't have <laughs> like part of it hanging off if it wasn't quite even so we'll do that and I'll meet you at the end okay so here's the right side of the headband once it's been sewn together and you can see how it lays nice and flat so in order to cinch it what i'm going to be doing is weaving my needle in and out across the headband and then what we'll be doing is just pulling it tight to sort of cinch it now to make sure that that stays in place nice and tight just weave your needle back and forth a few times and then you can start wrapping it around so you'll see here, you can do it as many times or as few times as you want. I don't like a big bulky knot, so you'll just see me wrapping it here. And then you're going to end up securing that at the same time. And that's it. The headband's done. So be sure to let me know how you made out. And uh, if you want to share with me on Instagram, you can find me there at Pretty Darn Adorable. So thank you once again for making me part of your day. And I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you liked it and want to see more like it, be sure to like it. <laughs> That's a lot of likes. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell button. Thanks so much for making me part of your day. Take care for now. Bye-bye.